Hi guys, welcome back to my kitchen. Are you guys wanting to do something super fun with me today? I hope so. And hopefully you have tons of green tomatoes like I do. We're gonna make ketchup. Green tomato ketchup. It's another staple that I would love to not have to buy. One of those great condiments and I found a recipe for green tomato ketchup that looks really, really good. And I think we're going to make it together. I know I had tons of great ideas from everyone. Another thing, I have a lot actually, and I'm gonna see how far this goes. And if it goes far enough, we might have enough left over to bring you a green tomato bread. That sounds fun too. So I need to get these cleaned up, washed up, and then I'll bring you guys back and we're gonna do this process together. Sorry, Todd's mowing the grass. We have a new tool for mulching the garden beds. I can't wait to share with you, but that'll have to wait for another video. I'm just gonna shut the door so we can reduce that noise. I have my kitchen scale out and I need six pounds of green tomatoes. So we're just going to see how many we have here. And these are a mix of everything, guys. Romas. There could even be some cherries in here. And the fantastic tomatoes. And probably even some sad Cherokee purple tomatoes that didn't quite get a chance to ripen. So we're getting close. 4.6 pounds. 5.5. Okay, that's right at six pounds. Hey, a pot full. How about that? So you need a pot full of green tomatoes. So let me wash those. I could probably even double the recipe. Probably, I probably have another easily six pounds here. And I would say at least another six pounds on the table. So let's get to washing these up and we are gonna make ourselves an initial batch of green tomato ketchup, small, see if we like it. If we like it, I can always come back and do more. Okay, so I got all my tomatoes washed. I threw in another one for good measure um, because I know there's some cleanup I need to do on a couple to get rid of some just bad spots. I am looking for my favorite tomato tool. Let me see. Do you guys have a drawer like this in your house? Hold on, I'll be right with you. Found it. <laughs> so this is my tomato core. It's actually, I think, uh, considered a strawberry core or something like that, but it does the job real quick to get a tomato core out. And um, I'm just gonna chop them <laughs> in probably eight pieces or so, little one inch cubes, just to get them in the pot and cleaned up. But guys, I have some stories to tell you today. So first off, yay, I got a promotion at work. Super exciting news. Um, but with that comes a lot of um, I guess just learning of the new position, longer work hours, um, and today, and a lot of talking. So I'm an introvert, so um, <clears throat> any day that I have at work where I have to talk a lot, I'm always exhausted at the end of the day. And it's really affected how I homestead big time. And it's only been one week, but today, and honestly, I'm just telling you guys, in case you're in this situation that you are um, trying your best to still manage a job um, that is not full-time homesteading and being able to homestead too, um, things fall um, quickly off the ability to do. So today I, um, I had major activities due and it was like 10 o'clock and I had not gotten to my morning chores yet. Um, so ran out, 
did those real quick and um, by the end of the day though I said I have not been able to bring you guys some good YouTube content and I'm sorry about that two reasons Todd has been super busy working on the chicken coop improvements and the Jeep and it's given me just a little bit of breather room with um, the job and all but at the same time I miss you guys and I want to I have stuff I have to do that is content worthy so um, all these green tomatoes have been sitting on my table for some of them weeks now and then some of them I just harvested last night so we're doing it we're pushing through we are figuring out our own I should say Rachel's figuring out her new routine oh, and sometimes when I was telling Todd outside I'm like I think I'm at the point where I'm recognizing what people say like how do you do it and I don't know how I'm doing it <laughs> right now. It's tough to be honest with you. I'm um, thinking to myself, don't whine, don't whine. You asked for this, you know, it's your lifestyle choice and I truly am not whining. I wish, I just wish I had more of me and more time in every day because I so wanna hunt and I haven't gotten to get out there since the weekend and I miss it. Um, and it's not, I'm not able to put in the time that's necessary. So I think it's just going to have to be like a weekend thing that I do and hopefully we have good luck. So have you guys made green tomato ketchup before? If so, and you know it's not good, I wish you could stop me right now. <laughs> I don't go through this entire process and find out it's not good. But I'm hopeful the recipe sounded good and um, we do we do a decent amount of ketchup usage in the house I would say probably two jars or so of your you know your Heinz ketchup every year so it'll just be one more thing we don't have to buy if it works out and hey I didn't think we were gonna like that yellow um, hot pepper mustard butter as our mustard replacement but i guarantee you we will never buy mustard again um, that is phenomenal so i'm super excited to have that now so let me finish chopping these tomatoes and we'll come back when it's time to put them on the pot and get them cooking grove day what did we get it's always, always a mystery. Because <laughs> I Rachel never does all the grove shopping. <laughs> Probably lots of toilet paper. Just toilet paper? <laughs> no, there's more stuff in there. Okay. It's more of those scrubby things that you like. Oh, yeah. So those are those European dish towels. They really handle up good, and I just throw them in the dishwasher to wash them. Garbage bag and new scrubby. Yeah. Good. Oh, oh your candle. You said you weren't going to buy him. I know. <laughs> I told her I wanted pumpkin fall scented candles. More carpet fresher. If you have pets, this stuff is amazing. It takes the stink right out of your carpets. Rest is all toilet paper. Very good. So we do Grove. Mm. We do Grove. There you guys are. I, we got a new tripod, by the way, so it might be a few videos before I get adjusted to it fully. We do Grove once a month. Almost always I'm going to have my dish soap and toilet paper. That's a standard. And then as things wear out, I'll replace them. Probably what, every three months or so we get garbage bags yeah, like that. I've had that for a year, my scrubber brush. And it's finally like, you know, frayed out like an old bad toothbrush. <laughs> probably so. some of it's from me because I use it sometimes to clean our cast iron. You're not supposed to use that for the cast iron. That's what the metal thing's for. And then I get yelled at. <laughs> 
No, shame on you. It works really well though. All right guys, back to tomato chopping. Okay, so the next thing that I have to do is chop all these onions. Aren't they beautiful? Oh, I love them. So we gotta chop these. It said three pounds of onions. I'm honestly just doing it by feel. <laughs> As a mom, you can pretty much lift a, a bunch of onions and say, mm, that's about a half a baby. <laughs> so I had, well, I had small babies. So I'm gonna get these chopped and we will put them in our pot with our tomatoes and be good to go. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done chopping onions. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna clean myself up and I think we're gonna switch cooking processes and go to the crock pot. Um, because I think I've decided I want to use the slow cooker process for this. I hope I'm not the only one that this happens to. <laughs> okay, friends, I have decided to pre-mix everything in here. I know I'm going to be like heaping out of my crock pot. I don't have like a really big crock pot, so we'll see what we can do. I need two cups of vinegar. A cup of honey. This is not our honey. I have this little bit left of store bought honey from when we ran out from Arby's, but we have like four gallons of honey I'm excited about to be able to use in the future in the pantry. I need a half a cup of brown sugar. How about you guys just pretend that you measured this out and it's a half a cup. Okay. Um, a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. However you pronounce that. We need a teaspoon of celery salt. Is it a teaspoon? Half a teaspoon. Um, how much pepper? One and a half teaspoons of pepper. Half a teaspoon of clove. A tablespoon of mustard, um, dry mustard. Two tablespoons of garlic. A half a teaspoon of chili powder. Oops. Okay, we just gotta shake. Alrighty, and salt. Well, it just said salt to taste, so we'll just taste along the way. So I'll start with probably a full teaspoon of salt. All right, let's get this all mixed up and then we will attempt to put it in our crock pot. To be honest, I had everything in the crock pot and it, there was no way I was gonna be able to get the ingredients in there and get it all mixed up to cook. So we will do our best and then we're gonna let this, put it on high and let it cook 
uncovered for four hours. Woo. Okay, that will cook, it will cook down as it as you would imagine it should. So hi. And I will see you guys back. It is six o'clock, 10 o'clock will be past my bedtime. I'll have Todd shut this off, put it in the fridge, and I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Real quick while I'm cleaning up, it is time to restart my veggie scrap bag. I've used everything I've saved over the last year to make broth this year. So if this is a new process to you, just one thing that you can do is every time you're using veggies, um, or um, I would say gentle herbs. Um, save your scraps and put them in a freezer bag down in your freezer. The next time you need um, broth for a soup base or stock um, or you're making stock from scratch, you don't have to use your good whole nice veggies. You can use your scraps of carrots, um, green tops, onion tops, I've used um, garlic scraps, um, oregano, you know, like the stems of your um, herbs. So I'm gonna start a new bag. Good morning, friends. It's bright and early, 6.30. And I'll tell you what I ended up doing. I ended up cooking this overnight. So last night before I went to bed, I checked it and it had been going just under six hours-ish, I guess, maybe five hours. And a lot of the tomatoes were still super, super firm. So I said, uh, we'll just let it cook overnight. And it might not be as green and bright as the original recipe, but the tomatoes are definitely well cooked down now. So I'm gonna take my immersion blender to it and we're just gonna get these process, processed up. And I'm sure I'm gonna let it, <clears throat> let it, need to let it cook a little bit longer to let it thicken. So let's do this part. Okay, I think I've got everything set up. I have, can you guys see this? Yeah. That old Victoro food strainer, which I haven't used in years because I decided I don't like the hassle of having to strain my tomatoes. Um, but for something like this or basic tomato sauces, I will use it. So we're gonna get this load it up in here and get it strained through and then I'll let it cook down. Hopefully by lunch, it's almost eight o'clock now, so hopefully by lunch we will um, be in a good place to get canon. You guys aren't exactly in the right position. Let's see where I can get you, where you can see this. Okay. Okay, I think I got it all that I can get. Okay, we'll get this put back into the crock pot and continue to cook it down. Alrighty. Little tool comes in handy when you really need it. So that's what I'm left with with respect to the peelings. Now you, um, just to let you know, you could run this through one more time and you're still gonna get some pulp out of it. I do that when I'm making um, actual tomato sauce, but um, I'm not gonna bother with that today just cause I am on a time crunch. So 
hopefully at um, lunchtime this will be ready to can up. Okay, it is lunchtime and I've been sitting here going back and forth with my fingers. <laughs> I'll show you what I'm doing. My dad's in here having lunch. So, Heinz. <laughs> and I squirt Heinz on my plate and then I take a little bit of my homemade ketchup, put it on the plate, and so I'm gonna show you. So it's still a little watery, right? I gotta cook it down more, but I've been doing this. <laughs> and I just had Todd do it with me. And um, so the Heinz is definitely a whole lot sweeter, but I think I like the taste of the homemade ketchup better. It's really, really, really good. But I do need to cook it down just a little bit longer to get kind of, you don't, you know, nobody likes when you squirt out ketchup and you get that water splash on you. So we'll cook it down and it's fine. It's in the crock pot. It's just doing its thing while I'm working. So it doesn't need much tending to. So when it's ready, I'll bring you back guys back. I'm still deciding if I want to puree it more. I may still do that. Okay, it's two and a half hours later and I'm still not happy with <clears throat> the consistency. So I am gonna be the guinea pig for all of us here. And I am going to add two cans of tomato paste to see if I can't get it to just finish thickening up here before it cooks down just too much. Cause you guys know I love this trick where I can get the most out of my tomato products for sauces and stuff like that. So I'm gonna see if this doesn't do the trick without changing the flavor too much. I may have to go back and just add a bit more sugar and maybe a splash of vinegar, but we'll see. <gasps> Did we do it? Did we do it? Look at that, guys. It's not pooling watery. I mean, a little bit, but you're gonna get that with ketchup too, just that little water pool. I think that was the trick. Look, it's really, let's see if we can pour it. See how it's standing on top of itself? Can you guys see that? Okay. Hmm. I think that was the trick. So I'm gonna turn this down off of high because I gotta go back to work and I don't want to cook down too much, put it on low. And as soon as my work day's done, we're gonna be canning tomato sauce. No, we're gonna be canning ketchup. Okay, happy people. It is five o'clock, exactly 24 hours since I started this process. And honestly, that sounds like a long time but really total hands-on, maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes tops for sure. I want you guys to see this, okay? I wanna set my spoon. That's some thick ketchup. And um, we're debating amongst ourselves, does it really taste like ketchup or does it taste more like barbecue sauce? And I can't really tell, so, when I taste it like right next to ketchup, it has a little bit more of a spice flavor than Heinz ketchup, probably because of the spices that I added. And it's definitely not as sweet. So if you wanted it to taste more like ketchup, I'd just say leave out some of the spices, add more sugar or honey. Um, but we're going to use it. We're not, I'm kiboshing any more ketchup being bought. And I'm excited, got the water bath canner going. I'm deciding to jar mine up in little four ounce jars because we just don't use a lot of ketchup at one time. It'll be more appropriate for how Todd and I consume ketchup. And we'll see how far it goes. So I'm excited. Let me get this jarred up and I'll see you back in a bit.
Alrighty, that is, let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five pints. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, four, four ounce jars. So, woohoo! I'm gonna have a ton of ketchup ready or barbecue sauce, however we choose to use it. Guys, I love the recipe, totally do. Even though it's not 100% that super sweet ketchup, it's a great in-between for ketchup and barbecue sauce. So, try it. I can't recommend it enough. I'm really happy I chose to add the two cans of tomato paste that really extended it and wrapped it up really quick there at the end. So, Thanks guys, I hope you were inspired to use up those green tomatoes and make one of those staples that you desperately need on your pantry shelf this year. Talk to you guys later.